Welcome back to another OG tutorial. Uh, this tutorial will focus on discussion boards under your course materials. So um, I'm in my course. I am going to click down on the Add Materials pull down menu and move down to Add Discussion. So once I click there, you'll see that the screen that comes up is very similar to the screens you've seen for assignments um, or even folders for that matter up top at least. So I'm going to name this demo assignment. You could say I've done that before. Um, and once I have it named, which is required, I have the option of putting a description in here for the discussion board. You have all of your text editing tools, obviously. You also have your insert content button that um, in previous tutorials you may have seen allows you to insert media or images from um, either stuff you've downloaded or from the web. If you have a link, you would click from the web media and then paste your link to a YouTube video or something that you have an embed code to um, in here. So if you were to, for instance, have a Google Drive uh, video that you have turned on where anyone with the link can view, you could embed that uh, link and you could see, um, you know, have your kids watch that um, as a uh, option to give them something to respond to. So I'm going to hit cancel really quick. So um, if I were to uh, type in any directions here, I can leave whatever I'd want. Like I said, put a video in. You can attach a file like a PDF type document that if you wanted to attach a document to here for kids to open up and read, uh, they could do so. And then you could ask a question in the top, um, like, you know, tell me the theme of the attached story the three little pigs. Obviously, uh, that is, um, you know, maybe easy, but um, it's just an example of maybe a direction you could put in there. I could then add some step by step instructions if I want to do bullets or a numbered list and say, you know, open the attached file that you have attached here, um, read the story. Uh, you could ask them to put it in notability and uh, mark up the text and jot notes or whatever they may want to do. And then in the end, you'll say, you know, below, leave your thoughts about the theme of the story, explain with details why you believe that is the case. And then, um, you know, they can leave their response. As I scroll down here, so obviously up, up top, it's all your directions. It could be audio directions you record, again, a link to an outside place or files you attach and all your options up here in your text editing window. Down here, you have a choice for grading. If you want to grade this discussion board, you can click on Enable Grading, and you'll see very similar to an assignment that you have options for grading. Numeric with its point total. Um, you could do rubrics, where if you would like to put a rubric that you can click on and grade kids out of um, whatever your rubric may have point total-wise, you could do that. It could be as simple as a 0 to 4 or a 1 to 4, um, and you can go from there. You have to choose a category. Ungraded is perfectly fine unless you do grade syncing through uh, PowerSchool in the secondary level. Uh, and then the bottom you can leave. So if you want to grade, here's where you click. Uh, you then have the option here at the bottom to choose a due date when they have to do it by. Again, locking an assignment allows you to then lock it after a certain period of time. So that way, if you want to lock it, you can lock it on a certain date or you can lock it now. That just means kids can see the assignment, but they cannot submit to it. Uh, I'm going to undo the lock. On the bottom, this is a really important button. Uh, it, right now it's gray, right? And if you hover over it, it tells you members can see other responses before participating. So what that means is a student can see what other kids said in their discussion board prior to giving their own thoughts. So that could be great if you're utilizing a discussion board as an informational type tool or to ask questions about something throughout the day. But if you want kids to have their own thinking and not see what other people put first, you're going to want to click this and make sure it's highlighted and colored. This will require students or members to post something before seeing other responses. Great tool if you want to make sure kids are putting some original thinking down and not seeing what other kids put first. So um, ideas for discussion boards. You could have one parked at the top of your course for students to ask questions. So you may have a daily discussion board where students can utilize this to ask questions, see what other questions were posted, and then be able to maybe help themselves versus have to ask, especially via email or something to that 
point. Um, or you could have kids, like I said earlier, read a story and respond. You could have kids discuss a topic. You could embed a video that is a TED Talk or a, a, a news um, broadcast from the day and have kids state their opinion and try and back it up. They can comment on one another's uh, discussion posts as well. So a kid could say something and then a friend could comment. You could ask kids to leave a post on the discussion board and then comment on two other posts that they see, having to get into some sort of academic discourse. Um, so there's a lot of options and you can be creative with how you utilize your discussion boards. So that is the basics of discussion boards, getting them in here, how you can tweak some of your uh, tools inside there, especially remember that button at the bottom where you can allow kids to either see or not see posts prior to posting themselves. That's a really great tool for discussion boards. So uh, hopefully you found this informative and um, stay tuned for some more tutorials. Thanks for listening and watching.